Hey, GED students. Um, so I had a student, Bianca, who was studying and got stumped by this question. So let's take a look. It says all of the fractions are equivalent except, and Bianca said she started by reducing the fractions. And I think that was a really, really good start. So actually, I think that you were going the right way. I'm thinking maybe you just might've made some errors in your reduction. So I'm gonna go ahead and I'm going to reduce each one of these fractions. If you had something like this, it would definitely be on the non-calculator section of the GED. So it would be super essential to be able to reduce these without a calculator. Okay, so let's remember that to reduce a fraction to lowest terms, what you're going to do is you're going to divide out any common factors that are greater than one. Basically, a fraction is not reduced if the top and the bottom have anything in common that's bigger than one, any factors, any numbers that could divide them that are bigger than one. So looking at this first fraction, five over 20, I definitely know a number that divides both five and 20. Because five and 20 uh, both end in the numbers five or zero, that's a big clue to me that these numbers are both divisible by five. They're both on the top five times tables. So if they're both divisible by five, I should divide the five out of both the top and the bottom. Remember that it's absolutely critical that you're dividing by the same number top and bottom or you are changing the value of the number, which is a big no-no when we're reducing. We're supposed to be finding an equivalent fraction in lower terms. Okay, so let's deal with the top. If I have 5 and I divide out 5, I'm left with 1. And if I have 20 and divide out 5, I'm left with 4. So this fraction reduces to 1 fourth. Sorry, I just uh, paused for a moment as I thought about that. I'm wondering if I copied these problems down wrong. Oh, I have a mistake in my copying. Pretend like you never saw that. Okay, <laughs> um, awesome, let's try uh, some more problems here. Okay, so now let's look at the next fraction, eight and 40. Now for those of you who have your times tables memorized, so you know a really big number to divide out of both of these right now, then lucky you. If you know that uh, both eight and 40 are on the eight times tables, you can do this the fastest way and just divide out the eight. If you don't know that, you might have to go one, two at a time. Uh, but I promise you we'll get to the same place in the end. So I know both eight and 40 are on my eight times table, so I'll divide them both by eight. And yes, knowing your times tables is probably the best, I mean, the most important base skill for fractions. But if you don't know them, can you still do fractions? Yes, you can. If you don't know your times tables and you want to do fractions, go check out my divisibility tricks videos. Divisibility tricks. I got all the tricks <laughs> for students who struggle with times tables. Okay, but 8 divided by 8 is 1, and 40 divided by 8 is 5. And so I can see this fraction comes to 1 fifth. Let's try the next uh, fraction. So looking at the numbers 3 and 15, they only have one number in common. They're both on the 3 times tables. They're both divisible by 3. I will divide the 3 out of top and bottom. Remember, you have to be dividing both the top and the bottom by the same number. So 3 divided by 3 is 1, and 15 divided by 3 is 5. Awesome. It looks like A is going to be the odd man out, but let's just do D to make sure. So take a look at the numbers 6 and 30. Um, again, if you know your times tables, you might know a quicker way to do this, but I'm going to pretend like I don't know my times tables and I'm going to do this one number at a time. Here's one thing I do notice. These two numbers are even even and I know one of my divisibility tricks says that all even numbers are divisible by two. So I will divide them both by two. If I do that, I will get a smaller, more reduced fraction, 3 over 15. But this is not as reduced as it could be because 3 and 15 still have a factor in common. As we saw in the last problem, 3 and 15 
are both divisible by 3. So now I can pull out the 3. And you might be thinking, Kate, I just divided by 6. Well, then good for you. You got to the same place faster than I did. But 3 divided by 3 is 1. And 15 divided by 3 is 5. So it really doesn't matter, you know, um, how many common factors you divide out as long as you keep going until uh, the two numbers have nothing left in common bigger than 1. So looking at these, B, C, and D all came to 1 fifth. So all of the fractions are equivalent except 5 twentieths. 5 twentieths reduce, reduces to 1 fourth. Great. If you have any questions about this, uh, be sure to let me know.